Uh, okay, uh, we continue uh, our day, our first day of the seminar, uh, which is uh, organized by Tatwir Chess Academy uh, under the auspices of uh, 3D Events Commission. Uh, this lecture uh, is a part itself, itself it's a part of a, a separate uh, course about the sports events uh, management. Uh, sports events management is uh, an important field in the world nowadays. Uh, and uh, it's profitable, by the way, for uh, maybe hundreds of uh, or hundreds of millions of people around the world. Uh, the sports events management uh, is so important that uh, a lot of uh, investment is put uh, into it. Uh, even Mr. Arkady Dvorkovic, who is the FID president, uh, if you ask yourself, how did he come to this position? He, he is... Uh, he is a, a, a sports events manager. He was uh, the director or organizer for the World Cup uh, in uh, Russia uh, or the Olympics before. So uh, that's the way that he came to this position because of the great experience he has. It, it was not about money because, uh, yes, uh, we know that he's a rich person, but that was not the reason that he became the president because uh, no one is going to use his money. He, he, he is not going to give his own money or personal money uh, to promote chess or FIDI, but he is directing people, he's directing people and uh, make a, a good combination between uh, the resources, the human resources and the financial and the experience which uh, a lot of chess people have, but they need a person who can uh, organize and direct all of this operation. So uh, speaking about uh, uh, sports events management, uh, the, this seminar, this lecture specifically about planning, only about planning. So it's not about <clears throat> executing uh, the plan. It's not, it's, it's only from the time when you sit alone with yourself to think ahead until you reach the day of starting uh, the tournament or the sports event, whatever. Uh, the sport is. Uh, so it's not about chess specifically, but uh, if you know how to think, if you know how to think, if you have the thinking tools, then you can use it in many, in many aspects, in many fields. It doesn't matter. You, you can be uh, just like ministers. You can take a minister of some ministry and take him to another ministry uh, on the second day, and then he will work in the same proficiency until, because there are basics. So uh, there are basics for uh, sports events magnet. Uh, tonight, we'll just give hints about uh, some of these basics, because as I told you, this is a long course, only just for the events management. And uh, the, uh, some people, they don't appreciate the importance of this job as an organizer or a director. Uh, they just think that uh, you can just sit uh, and uh, just collect your your ideas and say, okay, I'm going to organize a tournament. Uh, it's not like that. If you have the basics, then you can modify uh, uh, your, your style. Uh, just for example, in chess, uh, you have, uh, if you have the basics, you can start with, with H3, for example. Uh, if you have the basics, because if you play H3, you know how to, how to drive the position uh, uh, to, to, a pos to an opening or a position which uh, H3 is a main part of the of a grand plan, but if you don't know the basics, then H3 is a is a weak a weak uh, move. But if you know the basics, H3 could be a strong move as a, as a first move. So uh, for each field or each science, uh, once you have the basics, then you can choose whatever style you wish and like. Uh, now we have to ask, what is planning? Planning is a, a process of thinking. Uh, so, and chess also is all about thinking, chess itself. So, uh, us as uh, we as chess, chess players, I think we have to be uh, the best planners and the best uh, organizers. That, that, that's the, the normal case because uh, uh, our sport is all about thinking and planning. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, we ask ourselves, how to plan. <clears throat> uh, many people fall in the mistake that they are driven by their dreams. 
so dreams are not suitable for uh, the practical work or practical life. So dreams are just for, let's say for fun or just to motivate you, but not to guide you day by day. Uh, so it's just a dream that it's just like a strategic uh, goal you, you just put in, in, in your mind. But for example, now, if we want to organize <clears throat> anything, we don't have to build our plan around uh, wishes and dreams. There should be specific goals or uh, what they call them, uh, smart goals. Uh, smart goals, uh, it's a word uh, consisting of uh, five letters. S for specific, your goal should be specific. Uh, M for measurable. Uh, for example, you don't say that I will learn uh, the, uh, in, in 2022, I will learn the opening of chess. No, you have to be <clears throat> specific and you have to, to, to say which opening and it, uh, the, the goal should be measurable. You should say uh, uh, my plan or uh, uh, when, I, when I want to uh, learn, for example, Sicilian defense, I need to learn it uh, within five months, for example, and you have to write that down. So uh, any plan which is not written, it's not considered a plan. Uh, uh, this goal, uh, SMART, SMA, A is achievable. Uh, how to know it's achievable? Uh, you look for yourself, your, your uh, resources, your skills. Uh, if, for example, for example, if you have uh, 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 short legs, for example, you don't, uh, you will not be a runner, fast runner, or, or you don't play basketball, just for example. So you could be good in other sports or other things. Uh, so a, a very tall guy, for example, maybe he, he can't uh, raise his hand to play uh, chess, just, just, just for fun and say that. But I mean that you have to, to, to know your real uh, potential, your real uh, skills, and then you can know what can you achieve. Each person can achieve different things. So uh, that means uh, there are questions I have to ask myself before even setting, a go setting goals. There are some information I have to collect about myself, about the environment. Uh, smart, R is uh, realistic. Uh, T is time bound. You don't make open goals without a limit, time limit. Uh, for example, uh, Mr. Paz uh, spoke that in July, he said, in July, I want to become a, a, an IA or an IO. Uh, he just spoke. So that means he has clear vision. He has a plan. And that means he's working uh, within a clear plan. It's not dreams. Don't say, I want to be an international architect or international organizer. <laughs> you have to make your goal. You have to formulate it. You have to formulate it to make it like a piece of art. Don't just bring uh, clay uh, or cement or whatever uh, and think that it is, it is a piece of art just because it's in, in front of you. You have to do something with it. You have to formulate it and shape it until it becomes a piece of art. Uh, so an um, important thing uh, also, uh, planning all, always depends if you want to plan. It depends on uh, analysis. There is no plan without analyzing the situation first. And analysis it has tools. There are analysis tools. Before analysis, we have there is a stage before it. It's called information gathering, <clears throat> collecting information, collecting information about everything. So this is the base. Uh, the plan is something so far, and uh, before that plan, there is uh, analysis, and before that, there is uh, the information collecting. So if I want to do anything, I have to collect information. Collect information, first of all, about myself, my merits, my, the resources which I have, resources which I can reach. Sometimes you don't have resources, but you have friends, and your friends, they have their own resources, which they can share with you, or, they, or you can use them. Uh, so when you, you make the plan, you start with knowing which sources or which resources do you have and which resources you can get easily, which, which are achievable. So uh, for uh, collecting the information, for example, if we want to make 
a plan for uh, organizing uh, uh, some sports tournament. We have to know the nature of the sport itself. This is first of all. For example, uh, the nature of football environment is totally different than the nature of chess environment. We, you cannot make the same plan for organizing the tournaments. I don't mean in, in, uh, in the specific details, but I mean even in general. Even general guidelines should be different. For example, in, in, in chess, the most important person is the player. That's in chess. Even the arbiter cannot interfere in many cases unless he is called. Uh, and that's totally different than uh, football. Football, the player is not always the most important uh, factor. And uh, it's not important in football to make the player happy or uh, satisfied. Uh, there could be a, a annoying, a annoyance from, uh, from the fans, from uh, the weather, the, the, the stadium, whatever. Even the arbiter itself or the referee in football. Uh, so in football, you can you may think that uh, making the fans happy are maybe more important than making the players happy. That's why you find the players going out of a football uh, match or during the match they are always angry and uh, not relaxed. But this is this is their their game. Uh, but in chess, the most important person is the player. If anyone bothers the player, then you expel him out. So understanding this nature will help you for each different sport, will help you to formulate the plan. So you will know uh, on what field you will concentrate. In chess, you will concentrate on making everything comfortable for the player, uh, including the chair. A player uh, in chess can ask for changing the chair, his chair. He'll ask the arbiter for that. But in football, he cannot ask, the player cannot ask for anything. Not at all. Maybe maybe uh, uh, the administrators of the team or something, uh, they can speak, but the player cannot say or do anything. So these are main factors. When you collect the information, this information, when you write them, a lot of details, uh, this will ensure that uh, your plan will be concrete and your plan could have more, uh, 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 more prospects to succeed. Uh, in the future with less uh, problems. Uh, you will not need problems if you are uh, organizing a tournament uh, championship for football. Uh, you don't need any problem with a player. But in football, you don't care. You don't care a lot about uh, making everyone happy from the players. Um, the, 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 the stage of uh, information collecting, <coughs> to make it easier, there are tools as well. For example, uh, there are many different tools. Uh, for example, there is um, uh, the method which is called 5Ws plus, plus H. What are the 5Ws? They are questions you ask. They all start with the W. Uh, they are uh, what, uh, who, where, when, uh, why, and uh, the H is how. Uh, so for each different uh, thing, you can start asking. And then you start just like brainstorming. So things when you start planning, uh, there, there there is no there is no uh, there is nothing like uh, line one, line two, line three, line four. Ideas just like brainstorming, just like a storm, they keep going and and, and coming uh, back and round and forth. So you have to write down, and then at the end, when you put all the elements into writing, then you start organizing things. But in the beginning, you have to have the, 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 the scientific way of, of, of bringing the information. And then you have the scientific way to analyze them. And uh, based on this analysis, you make your plan. Uh, for example, if you want to make, uh, just like this seminar, for example, <clears throat> it, it, it is a sports event, this seminar. So uh, we can ask uh, why. Why do we need to make the seminar? Okay, we put all the reasons for the seminar or the tournament. Uh, uh, you have to, to uh, find a target audience and write them down. This is the most important thing in every plan. Uh, when, you, uh, when you start with collecting the information, who are the targeted audience? 
for example, in football, you have the players, you have the fans, you have to mention which players, which fans, which uh, teams, uh, which sponsors, uh, which uh, people in the media. You have, you have to, uh, to write all of this. And then you ask yourself what every person or, uh, or each category wants. What do the fans or the supporters of the team, uh, uh, of football team, what do they need? <clears throat> do they need the uh, comfort? Do they need uh, chairs? Of course, they don't need chairs. No fan of, uh, of uh, football will like such a chair or a sofa. They need something more practical. So they will not, they will not be happy if they cannot stand each second and uh, to, to support the team. So you have to ask these questions. You have to know all of the targeted people uh, who are the security people, who are the catering people for food, everything. And then you have to make everyone happy. You will ask them. The, uh, this, is the, this is when we ask, who are they? We put the targeted audience. We ask where, the question where, uh, where am I going to meet them? Where am I going to find these fans? Where am I going to find the sponsors? Where am I going, uh, going to find the participants of, the, of this seminar, for example? Okay, and where will be uh, the opening ceremony? Where will be the closing ceremony? Where will be the venue? So this is the brainstorming. Uh, then you, you jump, for example, to another question. Uh, what am I going to do to reach uh, the sponsor? What am I going to do to, to, to convince a grandmaster to participate? What am I going to do to convince uh, some VIP, for example, from chess to, to give this? A lecture, for example, or this seminar, or be a guest. How to do it? So these questions and uh, the five Ws and the H, which is uh, how. Uh, these uh, these are important questions which I have to ask, and I have to write down the answers because at the end I will make some links with a pen, pencil to draw the plan. It cannot be all inside. Uh, Head. There is no way uh, it should be organized uh, in writing. So <clears throat> there are uh, 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 when I start collecting this information using these questions. For example, this is one of the methods. Then I start uh, analyzing, analyzing this, analyzing the situation. When I know the, the what's the situation of uh, the internal environment, the internal environment, it could be you or you and your team and the external environment. The external environment include uh, a lot of factors. Uh, you have to, to, to also uh, uh, find out who are your enemies because th there, is, th there is no success which will, follow, uh, which will go smooth without people who, who try to uh, hinder you or stop you from the beginning. So you have to know these people. Can I bring some of them to work with me or, or some of them will never work with me? And then I have to know how to uh, oppose them and stop them, how to deal with them legally. And uh, legality is a different issue as well. It's so important if you want to organize any event <laughs> that you have to check the legal uh, steps. Because uh, now, for example, I'm using uh, Zoom. What are the... Uh, uh, what are the legal terms about Zoom uh, to use it in such a thing? For example, if I have such a background for some company, for some company, uh, is it allowed to to hang this without their uh, permission? There are a lot of legal uh, issues you have to ask about. Uh, for example, for this seminar, uh, what about the certificates? What about the norm? What are the legal things? Uh, for that to meet these requirements so this is a, a an important issue so uh, when you start analyzing the internal environment and external environment uh, then you will know where you are standing once you know where you are standing then we'll start the procedure of planning never plan before doing the information gathering and 
uh, the analysis. Once I know where am I standing, then I will do something. Then I can make not a dream, but I can start with with goals. Uh, these goals maybe are close to my dream, or maybe maybe I can reach my dream one day. Or no, it's not important. It's not important to uh, to fulfill any dream, but it's important to reach my goals. So. Uh, I am here, I'm standing here. Now I know where am I standing. Now I know uh, how much, for example, uh, money do I have to do this job? And I, I know then where, where do I want to reach? Uh, this is called a gap. <clears throat> a gap between where am I standing and where am I going to reach at the end of, uh, for example, uh, May or at the end of June or at the end of uh, this certain plan. So then I start something called the gap analysis. The gap analysis is trying to know uh, the road, the road between the point which am I standing at now and the point wh where I, I want to reach. So this gap analysis is could be called could be called the plan could be. Called. So uh, I need to know all the details. What, what, what is going to hinder me? What I can start doing here, I can start, uh, for example, one of the methods, uh, uh, the, the scenarios, planning with scenarios. Uh, and always, always uh, uh, try to use the worst scenario. What if, ask yourself, what if I don't meet that person? What if I don't find the money? What if? Uh, my computer uh, is damaged during uh, this year. What if the electricity uh, is gone? What you have to calculate? What if and check about the worst things? Always think about the worst things. What if the fans come and and, um, and attack the players? Okay. Uh, what if uh, one of the teams uh, resign from this tournament? What problems will I have, for example, with the sponsors? Uh, in case, in case the team leave, or uh, if, uh, for example, uh, uh, the lecturer, for example, Mr. Mahdi, for example, what if he becomes sick tonight and he cannot complete? What if he is angry tomorrow because of any behavior uh, of the people, and then he he doesn't want to continue? So you have to calculate all of these things. You start with asking yourself, what if? And then find, think of the worst thing which could happen. Uh, what if uh, coronavirus hit, hit the players in, in Chennai, Chennai in uh, India, where the Olympiad, just Olympiad would be uh, organized after two months. What if plague uh, hits them? So asking yourself these questions will help you understand the road from the place where you are sitting now and the place uh, I want to reach. Uh, okay, I go to another point, <coughs> uh, which is the team building. Uh, the team building, it's not about friends. You don't, some of the people, they just uh, think, who is who are my friends? And let me make a team out of them. Uh, no, the team building. Uh, is all about the goals. So once you know the goals, you know uh, where do I want to reach? How will I? How am I going to fill the, this gap? When I, I make the gap analysis, how am I going to fill this gap? Then I will know which skills do I need, which uh, uh, not type of knowledge uh, do I need. I write that write that down. Uh, I need, uh, for example, some person who is active. I need some person who is diplomatic, for example, just to meet to meet a delegate of sportsmen who are coming from the airport. For example, what do I need to reach these people? I need the person who is uh, I need a person who can uh, be their friend and uh, accompany and uh, accompany them during their visit. Uh, so I need a patient person, maybe a lady who's so patient, uh, unlike men. Just for example. So when you start asking these questions, then you will know how to choose uh, the people for your teams. So you don't start with building the team and then after that you assign 
uh, assignments and tasks for them. No, you start the other way around. <laughs> you start the other way around. Uh, you start with, uh, writing the tasks, the assignments. Uh, I need for this task someone with this uh, with this quality. If I find a person with these qualities, I don't care about anything else about him or her. So because this person, I'm not employing a person forever in my life. So it's not, uh, it's not choosing a, a life partner here. So this is a work partner for a specific job. So if this person is good in doing something certain, so this person will be used that thing once he's not damaged, uh, once he doesn't uh, damage it. So uh, for the team building, uh, you have to always uh, keep note of, of this point and uh, always have your own database. If you want to be, if you want to be a manager for sports events, you have to have a database of people, uh, their skills, what courses, what short courses did they take? For example, I need someone who is good in uh, uh, social media or how to connect the Zoom for a live um, broadcast to YouTube. So <clears throat> I, I, I don't need a professor and I don't need uh, someone who is genius. I need someone who is genius only in this specific thing, how to connect the Zoom with YouTube to, 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 broadcast, to broadcast live uh, to, to, the, to, to, to the media or the public uh, media. Uh, so uh, if you have the uh, database about people, uh, you don't make it with their names, the database, not with the letters, but with the skills needed for your job. So uh, you have this folder for the database. I have this folder for people who are good in uh, YouTube. I have uh, this folder for people who are patient. I also don't need sometimes patient people. I need active people who will finish jobs quickly. Uh, I have this folder, so I write down the names, addresses, and uh, merits CVs of people uh, under these categories. So think of this new idea of uh, making your database based on, uh, on skills and uh, knowledge, not on names and uh, uh, alphabetic letters. Uh, one of the things that uh, will face us uh, is uh, the emergency. I want you to differentiate, differentiate between two things. Uh, you always have to have plan B. Plan B is always important. And also you have to have an emergency plan. These are different things. Plan B is different than the emergency plan. <laughs> plan B is a normal plan. It's just like plan A, which you are working with now, but with different route different, uh, maybe different people, different uh, things, but it looks the same. You might feel no difference. Uh, okay, Mr. Ghari. Uh, you, feel, you, uh, you feel no difference between plan A and plan B. If you, if, there, if you have anything happens and you shift from plan A to plan B, people should not notice, should not notice that. So you have to have this always, you have to have plan B and even plan C. <clears throat> and make a plan also to make transition between plan A, plan B and plan C without people noticing until you reach uh, your goal. So just like, uh, for example, a bird, a bird which wants to reach that place, the bird's going that way, but uh, the bird sometimes goes left and right, uh, uh, and then it, it turns around and then at the end it will reach the same place. And uh, it will not go, uh, it will not make some critical moves like uh, just dropping down and then going up like that. So <clears throat> this happens in the emergency case, which means that besides plan B and C, which you have these normal plans, you have to have the emergency plan. The emergency plan is just like uh, it needs people who are good in, in crisis management. Crisis. So, the emergency plan is people uh, with the ability to uh, manage, to, to, to be good in, uh, whenever uh, a crisis happens. If a crisis happens, if a crisis happens, then 
you, you may need something to change all of the team. If you are in a government, you may stop. Even all of the, uh, all of the ministers, and then you work with a different group of people, maybe military people, for example, during the crisis, just for example, because people in the military, they, they study a lot uh, about crisis management. So uh, when, when you plan for, for such uh, um, sports events, when you ask yourself uh, pre in previous stage about what is the worst scenario, uh, at the end, you will have the, 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 even the worst scenarios at all. And for this one, try to make an, an emergency plan and it should have its own people. Uh, the, uh, these people, uh, you don't need to announce them. These people, they, they are even hidden. They just recall them or call them just when a crisis uh, happens. So uh, we have a note here. Uh, Mr. Richard Christie from New Zealand is saying, there's a difference between building a team, which you have just chatted about, and team building. Uh, the first is about assembling a group of people to carry out the required jobs, building a team. The second, which is team building, is getting a group of individuals to work together as a team. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Richard. Thank you for this session. So I think now the idea is clear about this, that for, uh, for this thing, that uh, what I meant to build it, not around people, but around the, the goals. Uh, there is a, um, a point which is resources, which needs to be analyzed. Uh, when you are in the process of planning, uh, what resources do I have? Uh, human resources is the most important thing, human resources. And the least, the least important thing is the financial resources. Uh, so I think any plan which is based on money is not a good plan. And it may fail because you may not find the, the needed money for uh, executing the plan, but that should not uh, stop you from living your life or uh, doing uh, your job. Human resources are the most important thing to find out and to make capacity building. To, uh, you should always have a team. Uh, maybe Mr. Richard can speak about it later on. You should always have your own team. Uh, and, and you always have to to to, uh, to raise their level, to make them uh, good always, to make them uh, good in all the skills, to train them, to give them opportunities to go ahead. <clears throat> uh, th this should be a continuous thing. It should not be just for a, a task. Just like, for example, if you have uh, a chess uh, team or chess club, just like uh, Mrs. Marjorie, uh, you don't need to train the people only for the tournaments, no. You train people or you train yourself because you have to be, uh, you always have to be learning and improving. So you teach them always. And if there is a tournament, okay. I will say, welcome, I'm going to uh, go to that tournament. But if you only train, if you, if you set up your mind to uh, train only for the tournaments, uh, then you are going to fail. The, the same thing, if you want to make or organize an event and you just wait for the events uh, annually or, uh, or periodically, uh, then you are going to fail. You don't have to wait for, for the events to just uh, come. No, you have to build yourself, you have to build your team, to, to, to build their capacity, team building, yeah. Okay, you have to build their capacity and then you can even make your chance by yourself. You make the opportunity, you create it. You don't wait at this time, you will not wait for people to call you, but you will create the opportunity, you will create the idea of the, the event by yourself. Uh, okay, uh, I will stop for a while now and see if anyone has any question or if anyone has uh, experience to explain and then uh, we can continue. You can use the voice. Mr. Richard, you may start if you want to ask.
and maybe I can uh, tell a few words. Um, uh, I think when you are building a team, uh, sometimes you have uh, other things uh, that you need to take care of. Not always uh, you, you can take uh, the best uh, uh, human uh, resources, as you said. Uh, sometimes you, ha you have to take an arbiter that uh, it is in your club or uh, someone uh, you, you have to give a favor to him. Not always you can uh, take the best uh, 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 people. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mr. Adi Yenka. Mr. Yenka. Okay, Th thank you very much. Um, mine is like a question or clarification, and it has to do with uh, resources, uh, especially the human resources that you mentioned. Um, what kind of uh, uh, consideration you need to give, uh, do you need to put intellectual quotients over emotional quotients when you are doing planning in terms of selecting uh, the team of email resources that are required? Basically, do you, do you use a blend of emotional, I mean, the level of emotional quotient that a particular individual has over intellectual quotient or intellectual quotient over the emotional quotient? Or is it gonna be determined by the situation or the kind of event that you are actually planning? I just want to have an idea if there is need to consider the level of IQ or EQ or an EQ of the team members. Okay, uh, can you, can, because the voice uh, couldn't hear some of the question, can I just in brief ask uh, the last thing, please, just in brief? Okay, you want me to repeat it? Okay, in brief, in brief. Okay, well, briefly, what I'm asking is that when selecting the team members under uh, this email resources, do you give preference to intellectual quotient or you give preference to emotional quotient, EQ and IQ. Okay. Uh, yeah, that depends. He's asking about uh, like uh, something between mind and heart. Maybe you can say. Uh, so which one to prefer? The intellect, intellectual part or the emotional part? Uh, for myself, I, it depends on the nature of the job itself, about the, the nature of the task. Sometimes I need someone intellectual, but sometimes I need someone who's more uh, emotional. Uh, so maybe a mix or a balance is always good because uh, we are not we are not dealing with computers or dealing with people. That means we the emotional part is important. But if, for example, you have people who are working with uh, IT, uh, for example, the people who are uh, 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 you broadcasting, for example, or something. Uh, I don't care about the, the, the emotional part. It's just intellectual. But at the end, the same people of the media who are working, for example, uh, to, to, to make this Zoom to YouTube, then to public media. I need the, the people who take it from the YouTube channel to people, no, I need the emotional part. I need them to be emotional, not intellectual. Or maybe even what you can call the emotional intelligence at that time. Okay, Mr. Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Dave. Uh, oh, thank you. You know, my, mine is not really a question, it's a comment. I, I okay. love how you mentioned the key ingredients to a proper uh, planning and brainstorming session, especially the part where one need to segregate all the stakeholders, being your media. And, you know, I love it because it always echoes well with my journalism training and accreditation, where you need to always have the four Ws and an H, what, when, where, and also understanding that whoever you want to come to the event, what is the purpose, where is the venue going to be held, is it accessible to all stakeholders, 
and all those things. And those are, in my view, are very key to ensuring that you host a very successful event. And thank you very much for echoing those. Thank you, Mr. Dick. Anyone? Anyone else to add or ask? Okay, uh, maybe I may continue to give some hints about this. Uh, <coughs> uh, there are many things uh, to look at. For example, <coughs> the, the venue. The venue is the most important thing. Even when uh, Mr. Mahdi starts uh, tomorrow uh, in his lectures, I'm pretty sure that he will start with the venue. Uh, what what are requir requirements for the chess venue and such details? Because uh, this is the place where people will be. Uh, there are there is uh, also the community, the community because there is always community resistance for any change. Because if you want to make any event, this event makes change. And uh, if anyone studies change management. Uh, we will understand that uh, in change management, that for anything you do, there are people who who um, who, who will find it disadvantageous for them. For example, if I have a, if I make a tournament in <clears throat> in uh, one village or or city, uh, this village or city, they are used to certain type of life. For example, and now you are bringing strangers to this place. There will be some resistance. In other, okay, if you go to a city and make the tournament there, for example, in this city, uh, you, will, you will have to buy food from some certain shops uh, for these players or for these uh, teams. This means that other restaurants uh, will, uh, will, uh, will drop in their profit. That's, that's, that's life. Okay, if you, if you take them to some hotels, that means people will forget about the other hotels and they will concentrate that the teams of the Olympiad are in only in uh, such hotel and a, uh, X, Y, Z. So uh, you have to always uh, study this thing and know that there, there will be always people uh, who, uh, it's not in their hands, it's out of their hands, that, uh, that the event is not in their favor. So uh, the community resistance, you have to uh, know how to deal with it. Maybe some people, they can use some tricks and it's useful, for example, like looking for volunteers. If you are going to make uh, <clears throat> some event in some place, ask for volunteers from the same area. Try to, to uh, include them in the work to, uh, to uh, raise their skills and to, to try to minimize, to minimize the resistance of, of the community. Uh, also, there is uh, the issue of security, which is uh, so important, uh, especially in the big events. <laughs> because there is, we know the terrorism in the world. So you have to take this into consideration. Uh, terrorists, they think in a different way than us. Uh, so for us, the, the, this tournament is uh, it's about sports, about exchanging cultural uh, uh, things, traditions and exchanging ideas, knowing uh, new people, but for terrorists or criminals, the two of them, the terrorists and criminals, for them, uh, this is uh, an opportunity to uh, to use it for their own favor, not for a shared thing. So uh, they have a total uh, different mentality, which means you need a team to plan with you about little security things, because you will need security teams, uh, either official or unofficial. <clears throat> uh, there is the health issue as well. Uh, this is so important. Uh, People always get sick because they are traveling to a new place, new weather, uh, the change of uh, the body uh, biological uh, system, uh, change of the water, of the food, everything is changed, even the air they breathe. Uh, so it's always expected that people get sick uh, when they go to tournaments, especially after the first round, you find people uh, complaining a lot, calling the, the organizing committee, they don't call the arbiters. They call the organizing committees and tell them that they are sick, they need to go to hospitals. These things should be uh, uh, set up ahead. They should be planned ahead. You don't need to wait for people to get sick. And then after that, 
we think which hospitals we are going to take them to. You have to make these agreements with uh, hospitals, <coughs> with emergency, with some doctors you keep in the camp, the sports camp. Uh, these things should be uh, done ahead. The first aid uh, and so on. Uh, there is one point I, all, I also want to uh, mention is uh, regarding uh, the money factor. Uh, again, this is so important because in the third world, especially in the third world, they always uh, uh, use, use this as an excuse. You can always do an event, no matter how much money you have. And even if you don't have money, you can do it with the little, with the little, with the little resources, you can do uh, events. And then you, you will think later on about sponsorship, about how to get it. This comes later on. When some people see that you are using a small, um, a small budget to make good tournament or good event, then me as a sponsor or a company or whatever, uh, I will trust you. I will think this person, if I give him money from my company, a sponsorship, he, he's going to know how to use the money. Uh, correctly and effective, effectively. So uh, the best thing to convince the sponsor to give you his money and to give prizes, to show him that you already arranged events with no money at all or little money. This is the best thing. Uh, for, for me, I think this is the best strategy to be done. Uh, there's some note I, I remember many years ago I visited both India and Turkey to study their, their, uh, uh, their chess experience, how, how they improved chess and developed it. That, that was in the past. Uh, in, in Turkey, I remember Turkey and India were given prizes by FIDI a long time ago during, during Kirsan Rimzinov uh, uh, era, when he was president of FIDI, uh, because both of these countries, they had two different, totally different, uh, plans to develop uh, chess in their countries. Uh, Turkey, they had the money. They had the money to develop chess at that time. I remember the president was Mr. Ali Nihad Yaziki at that time. Uh, so uh, they used the money, they, used the, they convinced the sponsors to promote chess and they started with uh, children. I remember I attended uh, some uh, very big tournaments for children in, in Turkey in a place called Khmer. Uh, so uh, in India, they used a different way and they also produced Grandmaster. They didn't have any money at that time. I remember when I went to India, I went to Madras, Chennai, the same place of uh, Anand and the same place of the, this Olympiad coming Olympia, 2022. I remember some of the academies and the clubs, uh, some of the players, they, they didn't even have slippers or shoes to come to the club. I really love that. They didn't have money to come by transportation. They came walking. And I remember the coach of one of the academy, the manager of the, one of the academies in India, uh, he, he said to me, sorry, that we don't have money to give you tea as a guest for us. He, the, he said, sorry, we're only going to give you water. So imagine such people, how, how great they are. What, what type of... Uh, development they made, and India now became one of the best countries in the world. And without money, I remember one of their secretaries, he passed away now, he's called uh, Omer Koya. Omer Koya, uh, he was the secretary of India, and uh, he used to go with his bicycle to visit the states of India. He used to take his bicycle into the train and go from state to state. And you know, India is a really big country, it's just like a continent. And uh, just <clears throat> he just used to go with his bicycle because he didn't have money, just to promote chess and, and to uh, uh, teach people about chess in India. So uh, India was given a prize by Fiji uh, that they made a, a huge leap, a huge jump in, in, in chess without money. Later on, in a later, uh, later stage, some companies started uh, when they saw there are strong uh, players and people and chess became popular in India. They started sponsoring some players. They started uh, sponsoring some tournaments like Tata Steel or, or whatever, a, a lot of uh, companies. 
But what I meant that it's not the issue is not money. The issue is that the human, the human himself, who can do a success, not the money. The money doesn't build people, but we can build and produce some money. So uh, I stop now. If anyone has anything to say about any comments. Okay, it, it's just to just to buttress the last point. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Amar. Hello. Thank you yes, for Mr. this, Amar, this uh, idea. Yes. Hello. Thank you for this good ideas. But uh, besides the smart and um, five uh, W, we need to how to build uh, investment because you are, you are uh, make a compare between the football and the, uh, I guess, in organized. But, uh, football is public and uh, the chess is not public uh, and we can need rich of money to organize uh, uh, or to build uh, uh, champions or uh, build the mine. And in, in, in this side, we need to how to build the money and to, 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 to reach us for, uh, or to help us for organize in a case. Do you remember that seminar we have uh, uh, made it in Khartoum before four or five years? We are talking about the uh, investment uh, or how to build investment to chess. This is very important, I think, that to how to make uh, us to organize or to build uh, everything for the chess. Yeah, so, so I consider that a comment more, it's not a question, correct? Yes, a comment, yeah. Huh? A, a comment and a question. Okay, thank you. Do you need any, I mean, do you need any comment about that or what is that? Or, or you just want to give us your uh, idea? This is, uh, just for ideas and uh, comment. That how to build, uh, how to 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 prove uh, the the to, uh, the organization are uh, organized in uh, chess. So we, we the, the uh, I think that you have uh, you you make a compare between the uh, football and chess. A football is a play, but chess is not a play. And uh, football can give the money or to, uh, but uh, the chess. It is not a gift of mine. Okay, okay. Uh, when I made comparison between uh, football and chess, I gave them an example. <clears throat> I spoke only about fans, about the nature of fans and players. I just spoke about, I just made the comparison in, uh, in this aspect that uh, in chess, you have to make the player happy, whatever it costs. And uh, in football, you have to make the fans. Uh, happy, and you have to make the sponsors happy. Yeah. Uh, that's that's that was my comparison. Yeah. But uh, regarding uh, the financial thing, uh, chess could not be uh, sorry, football could not be compared by any other sport from this uh, financial point of view. Yes, but we we we, we need the money to build the uh, champions and need the money. Uh, to improve our uh, chess, uh, and, and I think that it, it is uh, very important for the okay. I understand uh, you countries know. in the third. Uh, <clears throat> okay, yeah. now I understand. Now you mean that in chess, you need money for organizing tournaments and for improving the level of players, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
but in this in uh, it's the same uh, now i can bring football because in football you need a lot of money to make a player you need a lot of time a lot of years to start uh, until he becomes uh, a good player you need a lot of money to make a playing venue for football unlike chess this is this is one of the differences that the, the expenditure the expense expenditure in chess is uh, so little uh, for example you just sometimes you, you don't even now need a book or anything sometimes now you only need your mobile and we all have it all, all the people in the world almost so uh, and an internet so you don't need a lot of money in chess to make uh, progress and there are many countries even in africa that prove that many countries like angola for example uh, kenya uh, whatever many countries they, they made uh, a big jump. Yes. for example in angola they have many grandmasters in sudan there are none yes. and the money in know. sudan is much more than the money in, in angola for example so uh, so it's not about that so india for example is becoming stronger than usa the money all of the money in usa but usa is not the first country uh, in sports yeah got, uh, i mean chess football whatever for example in football uh, america has all the money of the world but their football team is not that strong it's a weak uh, team so money couldn't build anything for them yeah 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 Okay. Fine. Okay. Yes. Mr. Dave. Good compare. Thank you. Mr. Dave. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Dave. I think you are raising your hand. Uh, Mr. Hobby, can I can I go ahead? Okay, Mr. Adeyinka. Okay, um, I was actually trying to corroborate your last point um, about the fact that um, money should not be made uh, important first. Uh, I totally agree because what we need to showcase first is actually the value that will be given to people out there. Um, for example, in Nigeria, there is a particular uh, event that I don't know if you've heard about a particular guy called Tunde Onokoya. Tunde Onokoya is actually the founder of Chess in Slums. Um, he used his own personal experience to try and identify um, some individuals who could actually turn out to become hoodlums. But he introduced chess to these individuals and uh, made them to become, uh, I mean, chess players. <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, sorry, there uh, are two uh, people speaking uh, at the same time. Uh, Mr. Amar, please uh, 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 mute yourself. Sorry, Mr. Dave. Mr. Amar, please mute yourself. Mr. Dave, okay, so, continue? Yeah, so <clears throat> I was just trying to... Sorry, I mean Mr. Adinko. Sorry, I mean Mr. Adinko. It's okay. So I was just trying to confirm that uh, when you actually put value first, uh, at some point, <clears throat> the money will come chasing you. So, yes. uh, so I totally agree with your point. So that's the point I was trying to make. Yeah, okay, yes, <clears throat> exactly. Uh, Mr. Adinko, you are the vice, vice president of Nigerian Federation, correct? That's correct, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so uh, 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 the people with money, they will not look for failing people or failing federations to support. Mm -hmm. The investors, they need to see successful people so they correct. can invest their money. So no. uh, that means you don't have, you, you should not wait for money. We should not, if we wait for money, then you can wait forever. Yeah. So, Mr. Kato, Kato Joseph? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, Mr. Hello. Kato? Yes. Hello. 
Yeah. Yes, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Uh, yeah, so this is Papa Joseph. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, this is Kato Joseph. Uh, in addition to what our colleague has said, uh, we do we shouldn't actually work for money. It's true. Because uh, as long as we bring out good products, people want, actually the world wants, wants people who have achieved big and people who are dreaming big. Like for example, here in Uganda, I, I know that you know Mr. Robert Katende. He has, he has maintained it and is one of the good coaches that we have here in Uganda. So that's, how, that, that's, how, that's the way how we should be. You target and should dream big as, our, as, as the chess community, as the chess society. Together we can develop the game through dreaming big, through, yeah, we should not go, we should not run for money. We should first, we should first deliver the service. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So we agree again uh, regarding, we should not put money as an obstacle or uh, hinder. We should not let money hinder our efforts. Okay. So, uh, okay, about uh, this uh, subject, this subject is, uh, as I said, is a long subject. What I meant today, only just to give some lights and everyone can search uh, and read a lot about uh, this subject by himself. And uh, if people need a long, uh, a long uh, course about it, then we can discuss later on. But now we, are just, we just give this, just like an introduction day. Uh, so from tomorrow, we'll start uh, the chess part about it uh, with, with uh, Mr. Mahdi. So if anyone has any uh, questions or inquiries, we will put uh, this video uh, on YouTube or the Facebook, so uh, the Facebook group, so people can discuss there and we can listen to other uh, ideas about it. And uh, thank you very much and uh, see you later. All right, then. Thank you very much. We, have appreci we actually appreciate it. Thank you.